I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and today I just want to share some wonderful news with you. Um, but first, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, have you reached a place in your life where you know for certain that if you died you would go to heaven? And just suppose you died and you find yourself standing before God and he says to you, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? And I know that many people think, you know, oh, surely I would say uh, I'm a good person. I've tried to live a good life. I've not hurt anyone. I've given to charity. We may have many things we would say to try and justify ourselves. And, and so, you know, people think there are many ways into heaven. And that's what I used to think. You know, I thought if I was just a, a, a good person, I tried to keep the commandments, the golden rule, I tried to be nice, not hurt anyone, don't commit any crimes, then surely, you know, I, I would be one of those who would make it to heaven. And, uh, but the trouble with that is that all of these ways depend on us. But if we're honest, we're not perfect. None of us can really say we're, we're good enough as far as God's concerned. We all fall short. And so we can't really be sure that we're going to heaven. We can, can't really be certain. We can't have that assurance. And so there's this nagging guilt and awareness that really perhaps we, we, we will not make it. Perhaps something bad will happen to us. And so I just want to share some wonderful news, some, some, some news that I heard one day, uh, actually when I was a, a student, uh, arriving uh, at university in my first term, and I heard the best news I ever heard. And uh, that news is that God offers us heaven, eternal life in heaven, as a free gift. Uh, the Bible says that the, though the wages of sin is death, the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God wants us to have an abundant eternal life with him uh, and to experience that for all eternity. And he offers it to us as a free gift. That's why it's such good news. And because it's a free gift, it's not earned or deserved. In fact, no amount of personal uh, effort, good works, religious deeds could possibly earn a place in heaven for you. The, the Bible says it's by grace that you are saved, that we're saved through faith. And uh, that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For instance, if you just gave your friend um, a wonderful gift, something they really wanted, something that very expensive, maybe a new car and uh, they just pulled a, a 10 pound note out of their pocket and said here here's 10 pounds for for what you've given that would actually be an insult in a way because you're giving that gift out of love and now they're trying to pay for it and they're trying to pay something pitiful for it and and the fact is if it's a gift you, you, you can't pay for it it's not earned or deserved and God refuses any payment for his gift of eternal life for us. He offers it as a free gift. It sounds too good to be true. If we try and pay for it, if we try and earn or deserve it by our efforts, it's actually an, an insult to God. It can only be received and God will only give it on a free gift basis. And that's why no one uh, can, can pay or earn heaven. And more than that, we couldn't anyway if 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 the price that the value of having eternal eternity in heaven to have eternal joy and blessing in heaven the value of that would be far too great for us to be able to pay for it and the other reason why we could never pay for it is that man is a sinner uh, the bible is clear and we know in ourselves of course that we are all guilty in the sight of god the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, God's standard of perfection. And we know why we don't keep our own standards, let alone God's standards. And, and you know, sometimes people will be, get offended if we say, you know, 
we're a, you're a sinner. Well, we're all sinners. I mean, let's think about what sin is. Some people think sin is just the terrible things like murder or rape and so forth. But sin is anything that displeases God, anything that is against his high standard. It, it's, not, it's not just sins indeed, where we do things that are wrong, lying, cheating, losing our temper, stealing. Also, we can sin in our words. Uh, by gossip, speaking bad about other people's, uh, cursing, swearing. All of those are sins, but also we sin in thought. Even our bad thoughts, our bad attitudes, that, that is, is, is sin, like, like lust, like anger, like pride, like hatred. Um, sin isn't just sins of commission, that's the things that we do, but also sins of omission, things we don't do that we ought to do, like love our neighbour as ourselves, like loving God with all our heart. Um, you know, sin is being selfish. So once we understand what sin is, then of course we, we know that uh, not only have we sinned, but we've sinned quite frequently. Um, you know, just imagine I was a walking angel and I only sinned three times a day, you know, just three bad thoughts or three bad words, three times I didn't love my neighbour as myself, that's three a day would be about a thousand in a year and that's about 70,000 in a lifetime. And, and what would you think uh, of somebody who was in court with 70,000 convictions against him? He would be in trouble, wouldn't he? And so we need to realise we this sin issue is, is a big deal and all the more so uh, when we uh, realize uh, God's standards. Uh, because we've sinned, man cannot save himself. We can't possibly save ourselves. We've got to realize that. No amount of good works we could, poss could possibly uh, be enough to save ourselves. Um, you know, just to make it absolutely clear, we need to understand what God's standard was. Let's just see what would be God's standard if we could save ourselves, if we could be good enough. Well, Jesus told us, he, he said, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. God has only one standard and that's absolute perfection. And so none of us can reach that, even the best of us. Uh, it, it says, whoever will keep the whole law yet stumble in one point, just one point, then you are guilty of it all. You know, if you, if you break the law in some way, you can't stand before the judge and say, well, look, I've kept these other 500 laws. I just broke that one. That, that's not going to help you because you, you broke the law, you broke the whole law. Uh, you know, for example, when you were at school, you, you needed a certain grade to, to pass, to get to the next level, maybe on a driving test or in an exam. You had to get that pass mark to, to go any further, and uh, whether it's 50% or what. So in the same way, you could see that God uh, is examining us in life. And uh, if there was a passing grade, then yes, we could get promoted and go to heaven. And some of us may get 5% in life, others 20%, maybe others 50%. Um, but it really makes no difference because God's passing grade is 100%. You have to be absolutely perfect, and none of us can reach that standard. So none of us can save ourselves. It's also like swimming uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Just imagine uh, some people are very good swimmers. They could swim 5 miles, 10 miles, maybe even 20 miles, but it makes no difference. Nobody's going to swim the Atlantic. And in the same way, the gap between us and God is so enormous that, that especially in our human weakness, none of us, even the best of us, could not possibly cross that gap in our own strength. And so it, it looks pretty hopeless. But the good news is that God has crossed that gap in the person of Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And God has taken the exam for us in the person of Jesus Christ. And he got 100% and gave us his marks. But one more illustration of this that I really like is, the om is an omelette with bad eggs. So just imagine you were making an omelette for your friend and there's some good eggs 
and also there's a rotten egg and you throw that into the mix and you mix it all together and you present that omelette with the rotten egg. Would that be acceptable? No, it wouldn't. It would be stinking. And so in the same way, our life does may well have some good works in them, some good eggs, but also there's the rotten egg of our sin. And when we mix it all together and serve our life up to God, I'm sorry to say, it stinks. It is not acceptable to God. So hopefully now you can see that there is no way that we can save ourselves. And it becomes clearer when we look at God, who God is. Um, the Bible says that God is merciful. So he doesn't want to punish us. God is love. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He wants us all to go to heaven and he, he wants to forgive us. But the same Bible that tells us God loves us also tells us that God is just and therefore he must punish our sin. It says he will by no means clear the guilty. It says the soul who sins shall die. You know, we all, we all believe in justice. We all believe, especially if we or our loved ones have been, uh, you know, wrongly treated or even um, robbed or even if there's been a murder. We demand justice. And so justice is a right thing. It's, it's, it, we would be outraged if a criminal, such a criminal, was let off. And we expect the human judge, if the person is caught, to give an appropriate sentence and punishment. And, and how much more must God, who is the just judge of the world, he must punish the guilty. You know, just imagine I, you know, robbed the bank and I maybe shot someone and injured someone and I stole 50,000 pounds, but the camera caught me. And now I'm standing before the judge and uh, I say to the judge, judge, I'm really sorry, you know, uh, promise I won't do it again. Here's half the money back, you know, I spent the rest, but here's half the money back. Please let, just let me off, would you? Do you think that judge could just let us off? No, no way. He would be an evil judge if he did that. And how much more must the just judge of the universe, how much more must he punish our sin? And so God is just and therefore he must punish our sin. Now, that creates a problem because on the one hand, God is merciful, he wants to forgive us. But on the other hand, God is just, he must punish our sin. And this is a major problem. But here comes the good news that God solved this problem for us in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, I wonder if you've ever really thought, who is Jesus? Many people will think, oh, well, he was a good man. He was a great teacher. He did miracles. He was something special. Um, we remember him at Christmas time. But actually, he was more than all of those things. The Bible tells us that he is actually our creator. He's your creator. He's the creator of the universe. He's, he's God. Uh, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. That's a name for Jesus. Uh, and the Word, Jesus, was with God. And the Word, Jesus, was God. And then it says that the Word was made flesh. He became a man and dwelt among us. And so here we see that in the person of Jesus, God himself became a man. That is awesome. God, we couldn't make the diff, we couldn't go from earth to heaven. We couldn't climb that ladder, however hard we tried. But God did it for us because he came down from heaven to earth in order to save us and to bring us to God. And Jesus lived a perfect life. And I like to illustrate it um, using this book as the record book of my life. And here, this hand represents me. God loves me. He wants a relationship with me. He wants me to have eternal life. But there's a problem. And this is the record book of my whole life, of everything I've done, everything I've thought, everything I've said, all the things I should have done that I haven't done. And this is sin blocks me from God. And God is merciful. He wants to forgive my sin, but he can't just forgive it because that would be unjust. He's just and he must punish 
my sin. But God solved the problem in the person of Jesus. This hand represents Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God. He's God. And he became a man. He was born of a virgin. He became a man. And he became one of us. And he lived a perfect life. And in fact, he did amazing miracles. And he gave the greatest teachings ever. He did all the things that you would expect God to do if he was a man. Uh, especially in, the, in his perfection. You just have to read the Gospels to really get to know Jesus in that perfection. And the, but the most important thing happened when Jesus died on the cross. He was executed. And the Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned each one to his own way. And the Lord laid on him, laid on Jesus, the iniquity, the sin of us all. Jesus actually voluntarily died in our place. He took our sin on himself. He paid the penalty for our sins. He took the punishment for our sins on the cross. And he purchased for us, with his precious blood, he purchased a place in heaven for us for all eternity. And then it says that he died, he was buried, but on the third day, he rose from the dead and he's alive forevermore. And now he offers us the free gift of eternal life. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's proved that he is who he claimed to be, the great I am. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. I'm the way, the truth and the life. I am the good shepherd who lays his life down for the sheep. Uh, he is the bread of life. And uh, Jesus said, Jesus proved it by his resurrection from the dead. And now he offers us his gift of eternal life. And this gift is received by faith. Faith is, is very simple in, in a way. Faith is simply believing the good news that I've shared with you. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died for your sins? Do you believe that he rose from the dead? If you do, you do have faith. And, uh, you know, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him, that's the faith, should not perish but have eternal life. It's like key. Faith is the key that, as it were, opens the door to heaven for for you. You have to believe the good news. But faith is more than just believing with your head. You've got to trust in Jesus Christ with your heart. Faith is also trusting in Christ alone for eternal life. Um, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. You have to put your trust in Jesus Christ alone. Um, to be saved. For, for example, uh, if I, I am sitting right now on this chair, um, if I was standing on my own two feet, that would be a picture of me trusting in myself, standing on my own two feet. In order to actually have this chair holding me up, I've got to transfer my trust to the chair and let the chair hold me up. And in the same way, if to be, sa to be saved, to receive the gift of eternal life, you have to transfer your trust from yourself and from your own good works and put all your trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life. You know, for that, that's what faith is. Putting your trust in Jesus Christ and receiving his gift of eternal life. You know, I hope that this makes sense to you. And I want to ask you right now, would you like to receive the gift of eternal life? Because I want to sh explain to you quickly how you can do that. How you can receive God's gift of forgiveness and eternal life. You know, um, Jesus is the answer. He is the source of eternal life. And we have to uh, come to Jesus to receive his free gift of eternal life. And I just want to clarify what that means. Um, the Bible says that we need to receive Jesus into our heart, into our life. 
um, and receive him as our Savior and our Lord. He says he stands at the door of every man's heart and he knocks. And he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door of his heart, he says, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. In other words, to have everlasting life and everlasting fellowship with God. And all we have to do is open the door of our heart. Uh, because he loves us, we respond by opening our heart to love him and to receive him into our heart. And when he comes into our heart, he comes in as our saviour. He forgives all our sins. He wipes the slate clean. And he also gives us his new life, his eternal life. He, he makes us his child. Praise God. And, uh, but when he comes in, he also comes in as our Lord, because he is God. And so you have to surrender your heart to him. You have to commit yourself to him. You have to receive him as your Lord. There is a real submission in faith. It's trusting in him to save you, but also submitting to him as your Lord. You can't do any works to save yourself, but you do have to give him your heart. And be prepared to say, Jesus is my Lord. The Bible says that if you believe that he's risen from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. The Bible says that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's God's guarantee. If you will call on Jesus as your Lord and receive him as your Lord, you shall be saved, which means your sins will be forgiven and you will have eternal life with him forever. You will be made a child of God. You'll be, become a new creation, the Bible says. When you accept Christ, you are put into Christ and you become a new creation. You become a brand new person on the inside. It says your spirit, which is the deepest part inside you, is born again. And, and you come into the kingdom of God. And it's just up to each one of us. Nobody becomes uh, a Christian. Uh, a follower of Jesus Christ by accident. You, you have to purposefully come to God. Whatever church you're in, whatever denomination, whatever religion you're in, it makes no difference. It's a personal transaction between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to receive him personally. And in a minute, I'm going to just lead us in a prayer. Maybe you've, you've received Christ before, but you've, you've fallen away from him. You can pray this prayer too, just to, to recommit yourself to him. And I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me in your heart, or even out loud, and say the words after me out loud. And it will lead you in a prayer to give your heart to Jesus Christ and receive his free gift of eternal life. Let's pray. And again, let, make this your prayer. Dear God in heaven, I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he became a man. I believe he died for me. On the cross, Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. And he rose from the dead. Jesus I believe in you. And right now, I receive you into my heart. I receive you as my Savior. Please forgive all my sins. I confess I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. Please forgive me. And I receive your free gift of eternal life. And Lord, I surrender my heart to you. I give my life to you. I commit myself to you. I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus is my Lord and my God. And I thank you, Lord, that I've called on your name. And you promise that all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So Lord, I thank you for saving me.
Jesus' name, amen. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the vision of this ministry is really to, to spread the in-depth teaching of the word of God as far and wide as possible. And we are so grateful for those who, who have helped us in this way, financially and with your prayers. It really makes a huge difference that we can get the word of God out on different platforms and spread it across the world, even in different languages. Thank you so much for all your help. It's so important to know the gospel and how to share the gospel. And that's why I've written an evangelism training course that you can actually use and work through yourself. It comes with a CD that gives you an example presentation of the gospel. And uh, it comes with a good news booklet as well. And, and you can do it in, in, in a group or individually to share the gospel. And I've also want to present this CD series with eight CDs on the Lordship of Christ. It's so important that we don't avoid this subject that Jesus is Lord as well as Saviour and this will present again the gospel to you, the true gospel that doesn't compromise and water as so often happens today. Jesus is Lord. If you go to our website oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk you'll see on the online shop all the different products we have available, books, CDs, DVDs. On top of that we actually have over 500 different DVDs available of all the TV programs we've ever done on different subjects. Now there are too many of them to kind of list to you but you can phone the office, you can send an email to us uh, at uh, obc.church at yahoo.co.uk uh, and you can ask for a list of all our DVDs and then you can perhaps order the ones that take your fancy. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11am Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, ox 37 qh you can watch more of our teachings on our Roku channel and Derek Walker's YouTube channel. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products, where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.